Welcome to the Smart Property Investment Show, the podcast by investors for investors. Uh, how you going? Uh, it's Phil Tarrant here. I'm the host of the Smart Property Investment Show. I hope you're well wherever you're tuning into it. And it's just not Australia that people tune into this. We're still looking at some stats the other day and we've been getting a lot of feedback coming in uh, via our editor at smartpropertyinvestment.com.au that we have a lot of international listeners, which is cool. And these are Aussie expats who are out and about in the far-flung corners of the world, most of them, to be fair, in Europe and uh, the US and Asia, um, uh, who are Aussies who uh, still have a connection, a connectivity with home here in Australia and thinking about the future and a lot of them investing in property uh, and looking to continue to do so. So I thought we'd do a bit of a session on expats and and how you can invest from abroad and a lot is going to be connected in your ability to get a get a home loan, get a mortgage. I was only chatting with um, uh, someone the other day who was uh, in from Singapore, uh, someone I've known for a little while. They they work out of Singapore for a, uh, an Asian uh, banking conglomerate. Uh, they travel all over Asia, um, but they're an Aussie through and through, and uh, they're investing in property uh, in Australia. So um, expat borrowing uh, is a big thing. Um, there's some organizations that specialize uh, on this. There is some uh, some tricks and some hacks and some shortcuts uh, if you are internationally uh, situated but looking to continue to invest in the Australian market to give you some advantages and some head starts. I thought we'd chat about that today, but primarily around the lending side of things. We've asked our friends over at Finney Mortgages to come and have a yarn with us. Uh, joining us, Eva Lowenzons, uh, the head broker there. Hello, hello. Back on the podcast. How's it going? Yeah, good. It's been a little while. It I has think. been. Yeah. yeah. I think I've been out and about and traveling and doing things and yeah. you've been very patient, um, <laughs> yeah. which is good, which is very good. You, you don't invest in, you're French by, by background, you don't invest in France, do you? You're not no. an expat. No, no. no, no. You invest in Australia. <laughs> yeah, I don't yeah. think it's a great place to It's not a great place to invest. To invest I haven't, seen, I haven't spoken to you since the Olympics <laughs> in France. Correct. Great. Was everyone crazy it's been about invis- it? Yeah. It's been interesting. Yeah. A few interesting things there. What, what did you think of the – did you watch the opening ceremony? Or, yeah. What did you think of that? <laughs> I had a lot of questions. <laughs> but people just but, going, well, what's going on here? Yeah. Yeah. It's, um, a lot of free spirits over there. Yeah. Is that, is, that, is that the French in general? I thought they were quite sort of serious – Miserable folk. <laughs> they seem to have fun. <laughs> yeah, we do. Uh, and I, I think this, I, I think it was great to show a bit of the, um, uh, the freedom of um, expression in any sort of your life there. Yeah, okay. I know there's a lot of French terms around all that sort of stuff, and uh, <laughs> yes. which, I'll, which I'll leave alone. But um, uh, expat lending. Yeah. So you guys at Finney do a fair bit of this. Yeah, there's a, yeah. a fair bit. Um, from existing clients that have now got jobs Overseas. Oh, okay. So they've left Australia. They left Australia. They had yeah. a few properties we helped them with and they just want to keep going. Okay. Uh, and actually, we can see in the last few months quite a bit of um, uh, increase into new clients actually already overseas that want to invest. Yeah, sure. So it is, so it is possible. So, so if you're an Aussie, so say you've got an Aussie passport <laughs> or a Aussie permanent resident. Yes, right. Um, Both works. And you don't live in Australia. Temporarily or maybe forever, yeah. you can still you can still invest, invest in, in Australia. Yeah, like is it how prevalent is it? Is it a fair bit of it going on? Yeah, look, most most um, the big banks would uh, look at that and and, and others. Um, it's not a it's not a huge market, mm. uh, and some banks have actually decided not to do that anymore, like Macquarie. Yeah, but I think it's a great way for people overseas. Often they're on very big packages. Got really good income there. Yeah, uh, it would be a, a bit of a shame not to, to keep to, going. To, yeah, yeah, and 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 depending where you you live, and I think of someone that I was just mentioning there in in Singapore. I don't I, I don't know if they're a Finney client. Or not. I don't think they are. Uh, they should be, but they're not. Um, um, it's, it, depending where you live in the world, often you're not as a foreigner even able to invest in property. I think it's very difficult in Singapore, right? There's big big taxes and stuff for foreigners to invest there. So uh, for those people who are still looking for, for wealth creation, um, you know, Australian real estate still um, delivers pretty good bang for your yeah, buck. Yeah, so it's different, right, if you're an expat or if you're a foreign mm. investor, right? We're talking here about the people that are Australian or permanent resident of Australia, yeah, yeah. living overseas. That's the citizenship requirement yeah. or, or, or yeah. requirement to actually be able it's to... It's different if you are, I don't know, Chinese or... or yeah. Yeah, you, then you get hit, like, same thing, there's big, big taxes and stuff, yeah. you pay extra on 
bit on, more difficult. On, on stamp duty and I think land tax and stuff. So we're talking about Aussie yeah. passport holders or Aussie uh, or permanent residents of Australia still investing in Australia yeah. when they're not living here. Um, and, and, and the point you made there is that uh, there's a lot of Aussie expats, we'll just frame it, generalise it as that, who get pretty good salaries and a lot of perks and in some places where they work, very little tax, right? So or they've no got tax. <laughs> Or no tax. So they've got yeah. quite a lot of free cash flow. Yeah. You yeah. see a lot. Do you sometimes sit there and just go, wow, is that yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, you get from somebody that they would have a good income here, they almost double their package over there, Yeah. gets rent-free accommodation and pay no tax. Yeah. It's crazy. It's a lot. It's so good if you can get it. Yeah. Obviously, there's sometimes compromise with it. You're away from your family. You might not see your loved ones. And you might, leave, you yeah, might not be able to travel family. a lot and all this sort of stuff. And it's a pretty good place to live in Australia. But I know a lot of people are attracted to places like you know, Asia or even the Middle East. Yeah, um, where those big packages right. exist, and uh, uh, the smart ones don't spend all their money on stuff. <laughs> and I know a lot of people that live abroad and they blow all their money on toys yeah. and fancy cars and nightclubs and discotheques and big holidays and stuff, um, which is cool. Uh, but other people actually deploying that money back in Australia. Uh, welcome back, uh, Phil Tarrant, chatting with Eva at Finney Mortgages, FinneyMortgages.com. Do you who we bring into the studio as our eyes and ears and experts? Around financing, we all know uh, mortgages uh, is critical to property investing and uh, the better you can sort of get access to, to, to dough and, um, and and manage your finance, the better off you'll be as an investor. So how do how do Australian lend so, – so is it Australian lenders that provide the mortgage for expats or is it international lenders that provide the mortgage Australian, for expats? Yep. Australian your, lenders. Your same banks as, as anybody else. So all the big big four will provide. Big four, or, yeah, any any other ones. Okay, so, so you're not you're not um, you're probably restricted a little bit because there's some banks that wouldn't do. Mm. What do they call expat lending? Is expat that lending. Yep. Expat lending. Yep. Um, but so all the major banks will do it, and and sort of second deep banks. Yeah. So, do so they all do it in a different ways and and levels, and mm. some are a lot more flexible than others. So you have to target. Depending what uh, what's your situation, who's, who's like the better better lenders for expat lenders of the big four of the big four? Uh, ANZ. ANZ. Mm. Okay. And what about sort of the the non majors? Um, um, we would look at Resimac, Firstmac. Yeah. Yeah. And they, they they're happy to do it and all that. Sort yeah, of stuff. And, and some of them do it yeah, quite, quite well. They even apply negative gearing, which is a big uh, oh, really yeah a big thing when they don't bring back the income here. So I was going to ask you about negative. Gearing, gearing. Big, so, big talk about that at the moment. Yeah, there is. It's all it's all happening. So, but negative gearing is a consequence of of um, filing yeah. Australian Correct. tax accounts. But if you're a property investor, you probably got to do Australian tax return anyway, as well as whatever you need to do internationally. You probably need a pretty good accountant with this stuff. Yeah, but some some lenders, regardless of what actually happens, would apply neg- negative gearing deduction. As a serviceability thing. Yeah, as a serviceability thing. So not all of them, okay. not many of them. Yeah. But if it's getting tight for you, there are options out there that make it a little bit easier. Okay, so that's the reason why you need to use mortgage brokers. Only a mortgage broker is going to know that, that. That will help. Okay. Yeah. All right. So um, how much of your income internationally would a lender usually uh, count as your ability to service? Yeah. So often, again, people over there, they would get packages of... Uh, Solid base, sometimes accommodation and vehicle. School fees and stuff. School fees, yeah. um, sometimes uh, bonus commission and what have you. So depending where you go, some lenders might just take your base, some might just take everything, uh, and then they would shave uh, a good 20% of it. Okay, so they just shave it, just go, yeah, less 20%. Yeah. 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 Do they look too much into your living expenses and all that sort of stuff internationally? It's going to be really hard to... Same rules as, uh, yeah. as here, okay. but they would want to see three months of your bank statements just to show, show the income coming in. So yeah. if you're like going a bit crazy over there because your income's good, they would see it. Okay. So if you're thinking about investing in property and you're tuning into this on a beach somewhere... Yeah, behave for three months. Behave, <laughs> behave all the time because I tell you... If yeah. you get yourself into a rigor of presenting good financials to invest in property, you start investing in property, it's, it's worthwhile. You'll probably start shaping your, yeah. your expense allocation so you can do more of it. That's what I see all the time with, with expats. Mm. And, mm. and the person I'm, I'm particularly thinking about is um, uh, someone who traditionally wasn't a – I know him pretty well. And he, he might be tuning into this. If you're tuning into this, hello, you know who I'm talking about. Um, and he was always anti-property. He was like, ah, property is – he was uh, – you know, into his sort of stocks and shares and ETFs and bonds and all that sort of stuff. And it was always 
property, 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 property. He's been an expat now for quite some time. Um, and he finally started investing in real estate. And he goes, oh, that's actually pretty good. And he's, he's, he's done well. He's, he's, he just bought something recently um, in Sydney, but uh, he, he's bought a couple of properties prior to that. And they've all done really, really well. And I was like, told you so. You <laughs> told you so. Told you so. Told you so. So I told you so. Um, now he's now he's got the bug and he wants to do more of it. So he's really working and thinking strategically how he can maximise his his borrowing capability here in Australia and how he can deploy. He uses he uses a buyer's agent, which is cool, which sort of makes sense if you're not in yeah. Australia. Um, what's the sort of max LVR you can get on if you're an expat on on Aussie existing yeah. Aussie property? So I guess the idea would be seventy to eighty mm. percent, um, but we can go up to ninety. Okay. You go to ninety. You can go ninety. So if you also already have properties in Australia, we can yeah. release equity up to ninety percent as well. Really, and to keep investing. Yeah. Okay, so it's not really that much different. No, a little bit different. Just a, yeah. it's a little bit more complex. It, it, it is more complex. There's a lot more checks. Um, also, depending on the currency you yeah. are earning your money from, there would be different. Uh, uh, um, yeah. How much do they take into <coughs> to um, conversion, like different. exchange and stuff, like you know. Currency yeah. exchanges and volatility of currency. Yeah. Does that actually go into there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, CBA especially would be really. Um, they would check the conversion. They would share a bit of that. So there's a lot of buffers that apply to it. Yeah, um, and do they apply the normal serviceability buffers of like two to three yeah, percent, yeah, so and then plus all these other buffers? So yeah. if you're actually able to get a loan from a lender in Australia for Australian property, if you're an expat, You've probably got a fair bit of fat in there. Yeah, oh, there would yeah, be a lot of fat. Built in a lot of fat. Yeah, yeah. yeah. especially as well. Some of some lenders, not all of them, thank God, but um, some of them would apply the Australian tax rate. Yeah, I was going to ask you about to that. income that is not even, even taxed, taxed over there. Yeah. So, so if, if you're earning, I don't know, two hundred fifty grand over two hundred grand, they'll yeah. be applying the yeah. maximum tax yeah. rate, even though you might not be paying tax. Is there certain places? A lot of fat there. Yeah, is yeah. there certain? Currencies that that lenders like over other currencies, like do they, they are best, yeah. uh, they probably don't like too uh, too much vulnerability. But I know a lot of people also get paid in US dollars yeah. if they're if they're expats. It's still the currency for yep. for expats. So that would be ideal, you USD. know. Um, people in in Dubai, in Singapore, the US. Um, yeah, that's you know that's perfect. They've got this coal, coal gold uh, currency or silver currency, and the one that they just wouldn't touch. Yeah. Okay. Depending. Um, I bet yeah. you there's some dodgy places. Uh, I won't yeah. come up with any. <laughs> Particularly, <laughs> we're not going to name right, right now, but I imagine yeah, where there's a bit more, uh, yep, yep. A bit more vulnerability. So, in the and currency. I guess that's why we see a lot of people, even though they are in in Dubai or in Singapore, getting paid in US dollars. Yeah, um, that that definitely helps. So, it all sounds good, um, and it sounds like there's a fair bit of buffers in place. So, if you can afford the mortgage, you can probably comfortably afford and all the same things would apply you can have like offsets and all yeah, that sort the, of stuff the exact like, same thing apply there's yeah. actually no premium for the interest rate you pay the same rate as every, everybody else same interest rate yeah that's a question i get all the time it's like what's what's the rate then yeah same okay and and how long same. do you have need to be in stable employment internationally in order to qualify for an australian loan yeah you need a, a bare minimum of three months okay yeah. Full three months paid and done in your account. And will they want to see like an employment contract, long-term contract? Yeah, generally they want to see your contract, they want to see your pay slip, and they want to see your bank statement with the money coming in. Coming so in a lot more checks than the normal home loan. So, mm. um, yeah, we'd be ready for paperwork there. So oh. from a practical point of view, so it all looks good. Uh, welcome back. Phil Tarrant with Eva at Finney Mortgages talking about expat lending, how you can invest in property uh, internationally. And we're just sort of doing a – a, a quickish sort of podcast on this, just to, to table the idea for all those expats that uh, it is possible, it's capable. The, the team over at Finney are very good at uh, doing this sort of stuff. But at, at a practical level, like, how do you do a loan for someone that's not in Australia? Is it like all through just easy signing? Yeah, so we've got yeah, Zoom we've got, calls and all that sort yeah, of stuff. Yeah, with Zoom, we've got great software where you can upload your all your documents safely. Yeah, it doesn't go through emails or anything like that. So, so it's safe and secure and. Yeah, yeah, uh, encrypted. So yeah. it's um, it, it doesn't really matter where people are, Sydney, Perth, or Dubai. It's irrelevant. It's irrelevant. Yeah. So you could be in Sydney, um, financing a loan for someone in hmm. Dubai for a property in Perth. Yeah, it just doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. They, they don't have to come back to Australia to sign in the documents or no. be cited by a bank or show that. No, the only the only tricky part is depending where you would buy the property in Australia. Sometimes the mortgage needs to be witnessed yep. by justice of the peace or this type of professionals, which don't exist, obviously, so people have to go to the embassy. 
Okay. That gets a bit annoying. So they've got to go to the embassy to get, get a GP. To, Is that to get it postulized or to, something? Yeah, to get it proper. Um, it's, it's a French term. Uh, I think postulized post, or something. Other's where you got to get yeah, this, like documents. Yeah. yeah. What's the French term for that? Posti? Uh, posti? Um, no? I can't even think no. of it now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Something like that. <laughs> something that? Like that? No more than you about French. <laughs> yes, the you French, do. The French, French, French language yeah. better. Yeah, so that's where it gets a yeah. bit annoying is yeah, uh, yeah, to yeah. get witness and, and but that's just proper just a, ID uh, check. Yeah, that's like all... There's nothing in the grand scheme of yeah. all things, um, but that's where um, being overseas could uh, slow so, things down. So where can it go wrong, this sort of stuff like, you know, borrowing... In Australia, on Australian property, if you're living overseas, like do you see things coming unravel? You lose your job, I think, maybe. But. I guess, yeah. Um, people that are self-employed, it's a bit trickier. So it's hard if you're self-employed internationally. It's harder. Yeah, yeah because obviously tax over. return can be a very different system. So there's one lender that would do that, for example, but the rates are a lot, a lot higher, but still, okay. still doable. Uh, and then I think what can be tricky is timing when. Mm. When it's all e signed and sending docs by email is fine, but when we need proper original documents, it, they get lost in the post, they yeah. get stuck somewhere, it takes three weeks to get them, and you know, you've got sometimes settlement that is due. Yeah, okay. And so it's just where, another. Yeah, the timing sometimes can be a bit off. But that's what you guys do. Yeah. That's what you do. You sort it all out. Right. So, so at a practical level, how do you say I'm buying a house in Perth and I'm living in Dubai and <laughs> you guys are sorting out? How do I actually get the money like from my bank account in Dubai to uh, a real estate agent to pay a deposit in Perth and then whatever's left to pay? Yeah, like, same same, same way as here. Yeah, yeah, same system. Just yeah. To, but you need to be timing your. Yeah, the currency things, conversion that's right. and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. the thing can take a bit a bit longer, but um, international bank transfers are quite easy these days. Yeah, yeah. Mm. I imagine this would be a lot harder twenty years ago. Yeah, it would have been very hard. Yeah, yeah. Probably would have to come fly down to sign paperwork and transfer. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> transfer money. No, it's um. Yeah, I think the only the only thing is the timing. You just need to allow a bit longer period of time for each each step. Each, to each step. Yeah. Okay. Mm. Uh, so you just got to. Build that fat into any yeah. contract negotiations yeah. or requirements. What about um, uh, if I'm an Aussie expat and I've been investing in Australian property for some time and I want to pull money out of those properties for refinancing and all that sort of stuff? Do they get they get a bit weird about that? The banks are they happy for you to, to pull just do a pure cash out? Yeah, yeah, no, that's fine. Uh, same yeah. same policies as, as here. You would need to explain you know, what it's for, mm. and where it's going. And would, do if they really care? A, will they you, say like, will they ever say no? You can't do that, or they just need to know? They would. They would need a, a proper reason. Yeah. If you can articulate a reason, that would make sense. Yeah. Um, yeah, we've done some cash out where, technically, we have no evidence after it's settled where the money is going. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. But that's the responsibility of the person that's getting the, yeah. the cash out. What's the biggest portfolio you've seen in Australia of someone who's an expat? Like, the, the, is there expats with big portfolios? Yeah, I think Rebecca, who is our um, expat. Specialist, yes. I think she's got somebody at the moment that has nine properties. Wow, and refinancing and all, done, all of them. Yeah, yeah, she's doing. Um, I think they bought one last month and doing another one this month. Really? Yeah. Okay, and and they're just making good money they're somewhere in else in Hong Kong, and, I believe. Yeah. Okay, mm. wow. So it sounds like it's not a bridge too far. It's reasonably straightforward it's if you organise. A bit more paperwork, a bit more timing okay. needs to be allowed. Um, but yeah, I think that the main message here is you don't need to put everything on hold if you have a great deal overseas for work for a few years. Yeah. Things can keep happening. So you keep moving, keep, you keep moving. investing in property, you get all the benefits of living abroad and maybe yeah. getting better yeah. tax. But I would imagine you need to speak to your accountant now because it's going to yeah. be multiple tax returns and, you know, if you're making income internationally and you're investing in property here and you're doing tax returns here, there needs to be a disclosure of income and... They, 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 you know, yeah, you still need to do your tax return here for, yeah, for the yeah. rental. Okay. Yeah. So, how much time more do people need if they're going to if they're an expat lender going through sort of financing process? Just reach out to you guys as soon as they can. I yeah, imagine. it really to be honest, it really depends where they are um, okay. and what currency they are paid. So, yeah. US dollars is the best dollars. It makes things easier for sure. Uh, or or um, if sort your of bank British accounts or euros, are, I imagine. Yeah, pretty good. So it's going to get tricky if like your bank account is in Chinese and there's nothing English on it. Okay. It has to be. 
like an U- <laughs> Uzbeki and ruble or whatever they've got out yeah. there. Like maybe that might be a little bit. I don't it's even know what the currency in yeah, Uzbekistan is. It, things uh, get a bit yeah. um, trickier and, and takes longer. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's okay. All right. So the idea is to get pre-approval before you buy the property. So everything has been checked prior. And then it's just then rubber stamping it. Then go and buy the property it. and it's just a matter of ticking off the, the valuation. So you guys are happy to do all the pre-approvals for expats, even yeah. though they might not have got yeah. a property. Okay. Yeah. Well, let's. I think let's just keep talking about this because it's 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 a topic that that people have been asking about. We haven't really covered it on the Smart Property Investment Show, so we could do more of it. We dig a lot deeper. That's more of a sort of an intro episode to it all. We can get to the nitty gritty of mm-hmm. it, or maybe we can get Rebecca in. Yeah. She can talk about it. She knows all the yeah. she knows all the tricks and the <laughs> yeah. and the, and the tactics. Um. All right. And, and your team, you guys have got capacity at the moment to to work with Aussie investors. Yeah, always. Always. You always find a time. Always find a time. Do people go? Oh, I heard you on the Smart Property Investment Show. Do you look after people who are on, who do find you from the Smart Property Investment Show? They get priority. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Always. Always. You hear it here first. No, we, we, you know, when people call and, and say specifically, I want to talk to Eva, I want to talk to Beck. Well, we try to to try make it work it. for you. Yeah, because often it's because you don't get upset hurt. if people go, no, no, I want to speak. I want Beck to be my broker. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> yeah, Beck's my broker, isn't she? Yeah. Yeah, you're not. You're not even my broker. No. No. That's no. Beck's cool. Couldn't deal with you, Phil. You reckon? <laughs> I'm easy. I'm easy. I think uh, she, she's she's. Yeah, so she, she always seems to get the hard clients, doesn't she? She's patient. She's patient. <laughs> Patience is important. But um, yeah. well, thanks, Eva. Um, Thank you. Finny.com.au, F I N N I dot com. Today, yeah. All right, go and check these guys out. If you're an expat, um, <laughs> even if you want more info, you're happy just to just explain what's going on. You, you should do like an info pack for expats or something. Like that. Oh, yeah, we can do that. Yeah. Make it easy. Mm. The 10 steps to invest in Australian property as an expat. Yeah. There you go. Easy. Yeah, we can um, do that. And, and a lot of people get, they, they just think you only do, if you, I Googled fitting the other day and you, you come up sort of really high as, as property investment specialists, but yeah. a lot of people think you only do property investment stuff. You do own an occupier. Yeah, we'd right? love to do a, yeah, you, like, you love owner occupier, yeah. That would be <laughs> Much easy. easier. Yeah, I think we just got to be known for that because it's complex and and we yeah. do that very well, but um you're, you're just as good at doing an occupier. Then that's, that's easier. Yeah. So, yeah. And all your occupier stuff, if you've got to get that absolutely right, mm. you know, as, as a foundation for yeah. any property investing, right? Because mm. you can't pay, maybe you can't deduct your interest on own occupier home. But um, you might have some equity in there that can, can be a real catalyst um, for investing. And I guess, again, for, for expats, um, uh, you really need a really good accountant because there's rules around if you have a principal place of residence and then you leave Australia and you turn that into an investment property, there's a certain amount of time you can have it as an investment property before Capital you need to come back that. and capital gains tax. So it gets complicated, <laughs> but it's not too complicated with the, some, some some good advisors and yeah. some good support like a mortgage broker and a good accountant. Um, you can get it done. So thanks for coming in. No, thank you. Sharing all that. Uh, thanks, everyone, for tuning in. Remember, smartpropertyinvestment.com.au, uh, social media. You can find a Smart Property HQ or just Smart Property Investment across all those platforms. Uh, where a lot of people seem to watch us uh, these days. We're on YouTube as well for these things. If you're tuning into this, you can watch us uh, in the studio. It's just me standing behind a mo- microphone moaning on. But uh, for some reason, a lot of people like that sort of stuff as well. So uh, we'll see you next time. Until then, bye-bye. The information featured in this podcast is general in nature and does not take into consideration your financial situation or individual needs and should not be relied upon. Before making any investment, insurance, tax, property or financial planning decision, you should consult a licensed professional who can advise whether your decision is appropriate for you. Guests appearing on this podcast may have a commercial relationship with the companies mentioned.